Hi, I'm Lonnie. So there are claims out there that have gone viral that GPT can beat stockfish playing at an 1800 ELO rating level in chess. And 1800 ELO is really, really good. I mean, way better than me. If that were true, that would be nothing short of amazing, considering that GPT was not trained to play chess. It was trained to predict the next word. Now, it's, I'm sure it's read a lot about chess, but even so, playing at that level requires advanced reasoning about positions that it will have never seen or read about. So I'm curious. So let's try it. So in this video, I'm going to play chess against three GPT models. GPT 3.5 Turbo Instruct, which is the one the claim was originally made for, uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo, and GPT 4. And uh, I've combined a chess library with the OpenAI API li library that I've talked about in previous posts. So I'm making this model available to you. If you want to try it out yourself, you can. You can play, play against GPT. Uh, it does require analytic enterprise because of the API calls. But um, even more interesting than playing it, I think, is really seeing how it assembles the prompts that it, it gives to the language model. So you can see that even if you can't make the calls. Um, if you, I think that you might learn a lot from that about how to go about integrating a large language model into other applications, especially if you've never done that before. So enough of the introduction. Let's play. Now it takes GPT a while to think, so I'll edit the video and speed up those parts. Okay, I'll start by playing against GPT 3.5 Turbo Instruct with GPT as white. Okay, it opens with knight to h3. That's probably about the weakest opening possible. <laughs> Knights on the edge of the board are weak, and that doesn't do anything to control the center of the board. So let's grab the center with the king's pawn. So now it should probably push a CD or E pawn to the center. Okay, it does knight C3, which is okay. Let's bring our knight out. I would again expect him to push the center pawn. What was that? That was a useless rook move. Uh, I don't think that really accomplishes anything. I'll just continue developing with knight F6. Oh, knight to A4. Oh, that's a really bad move. Okay. That seeds complete control of the center to me, and his position is now so weak, the game is basically over on the fourth move. Okay, so he needs to move a pawn to let a bishop out. Of course not. Instead, he gives away his knight for free. Ugh, it just keeps getting worse and worse. Okay, I'm going to throw him a bone on the next move. Let's try to get him back in the game. A3 does not release any of his trapped pieces, but at least it takes away the b4 square from my knight. Uh, let's give him our bishop. Let's see if he'll take it. That would equalize material. It would get his knight to the center. No, pretty much, I think that would sort of make, bring the game back closer to even if he takes it. <laughs> of course not. Okay, let's leave the bishop there and give him the second shot at it. I'll just castle. Another useless rook move. My bishop is just aching to take that f2 pawn. Uh, I think it might be more interesting to see if he reacts to a checkmate threat. All he has to do to defuse the threat is to take the bishop. But if he doesn't do something, if he does something useless, it's going to be game over. And that was a futile move. Checkmate on the ninth turn. So GPT 3.5 turbo, not so impressive. It appears to be maybe around a 100, maybe 150 ELO. Uh, but on the positive side, every one of the moves during that game was a valid move. I think that's, that is something. Now let's play against GPT 3.5 Turbo. I'll let GPT open with white again. That was a good king pawn opening, so I'll do c6. Excellent! d4 takes control of the center. I'll challenge out with d5. He takes, so I'll take. You know, this is known as the Carol Khan exchange variation. It's a very good opening, so that's a very good start. B4 looks like he plans to Fianchetto his bishop to B2. I'll just develop my knight. Okay, this message box says that GPT did not format its response correctly, um, the way I told it to, to format it. So, as a result, my parsing code can't extract the move, but I can see from its response 
that it wants to move B3 to B4. So I can make that move for it manually. Interestingly, he did not fee in shadow the bishop like, like I thought he would. And this b4 pawn looks free for the taking, unless it's some sort of gambit. Okay. Knight to a3, and that's to protect the c2 pawn, which I guess that's okay. Uh, let's see, what should I do? Queen a5, maybe? I, don't know, I think I'll just continue development with knight f6. c4, kind of a queen's gambit. My d5 pawn is very protected, so that's not too threatening. I'll activate the bishop so I can play e6 next without blocking it in. f3. I guess he's trying to restrict my knight. But I think I can fork his king and rook. No, oops, that was a blunder on my part. <laughs> I wonder if he'll notice. Yes, he did notice. He took advantage of my blunder. Okay, that's awesome. That's awesome. Good. You know, that actually puts him ahead. He's, he's winning right now. Nine moves in and GP3's ahead. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, so I'll do my E6 now. Um, knight to A3. I'm not sure what about that one. The C4 pawn's already protected by the bishop. So I don't know. I think I'll just throw in a check. He defends with the bishop. That's very good. I'll double down with the queen and threaten his knight. He takes my center pawn. Okay, let's see here. I think my queen bishop standoff can wait. I don't want to lose my e6 pawn, so I'll take the d5 pawn. He moves his queen in front of my other bishop. <laughs> okay, that's a huge blunder. Uh, I say that's the first blunder of this game, but that's a big one. Uh, thanks for the queen. Okay, this means he just tried to make an illegal move. C2 to C2. Okay, so that's a non-move, but C2 is my piece, so yeah, that's not illegal. <laughs> so try again. He captures the bishop, and attacks my other bishop. Okay, that's good, but now his other bishop is free for the taking. Uh, and he has to move out of check. Let's see, I see one, two, three ways to do that. Okay, he's moved out of check. Let's see, I'll put some pressure on the knight and rook. Let's see, rook c1 is not going to protect the knight, because if he moves there, the bishop will just take it. So, f4. Hmm. Boy, I don't know, it feels like there's a might be a mate lurking, but... I'm not spotting it. <laughs> so, um, I'll take that pawn. I think I'll take it with the bishop, so my queen doesn't have to defend the bishop. Knight b4. I can take the knight or the rook. I still feel like there's a checkmate lurking. Since I don't see it, I'll just take the rook. He attacks the bishop. I'll take the pawn. That adds a second defender to the bishop. And he takes it anyway. Okay. Let's see. I'll take him with the knight. And that also puts him in check. Okay, that is another illegal move. F1 to G3. See, it's a bishop on F1, but it's moving like a knight. Yeah, so that doesn't work. Okay, he attempted another illegal move. H1 to G1. So that would be moving the rook, which is boxed in. So try again. Wow. <laughs> I still can't spot a mate. It feels like it's there somewhere. Anyway, I guess it's time to get the rooks into the attack. He attacks a knight. You know, I'll be happy to trade the knight for his bishop. You know, once my rooks get there, that'll be a good deal. Ooh, king d2. That's actually a good idea. See, now if he takes the knight with his bishop, I can't take it back. At least not immediately. Time to bring... I'm, I'm going to bring the rooks in. Let him have the knight. So, yeah, he takes the knight. That's good. Okay, so let's see. I can throw in a check and chase him away from the bishop. Okay, I have both rooks attacking now. And I, now I can see the force mate. I see it. I'm just going to walk him to the back row, and, and that'll be checkmate. 
Ooh, another illegal move attempt. G2 to G3. There's no peace on G2. Try again. And another illegal move attempt. F2 to F2. There's not even anything on F2 either. Try again. You know, that makes me kind of wonder if he sees the forced mate, and that's why he's trying all these illegal moves. I don't know. Anyway, I think that's what, the fourth illegal move attempt this game? Alright, so now the rook covers the second row. That's going to force into the back rank, where the queen will deliver the mate. So another illegal move, e2 to e1. And there it is. Okay, so that was a good game. I mean, I actually felt like I was playing a decent player. Let's see, that went on for 27 moves. And, you know, if it wasn't for that one move where he blundered his queen, the other moves were all pretty good, I'd say. You know, that's, I, I think he's playing maybe in the ELO 600s. You know, I'm pretty impressed with that game. It's the best game, actually, that I've seen GPT play. Okay, so now we only have one more model, GPT-4. Let's play a game against the big one, see how it does. This time let's have it play black, just to mix it up a little. Okay, so I'll open with a king pawn, and it responds with a king pawn, good. We'll take the knight out, and... Um, it brings out its f6 knight. It's called a Petrov defense. Okay, I'll take the uh, d4 pawn into the middle. That was not a good move. It just moved its rook. It's done that a couple games. The other ones did that a couple games too. That's not a good one. So I can just take the pawn, threaten the knight. Now let's see if it will actually move its knight out of the way. So it did. Good. It would have been a little bit better, I think, to take the e4 pawn, but at least it got the knight out of the way. Okay. Um, I'll take the bishop out. I don't know. It's probably not the greatest move, but whatever. Um, okay, that was... Uh, he just gave away his knight. That was a bad move. <laughs> okay. So now he's kind of losing big time. Okay, brings out the c6 knight. That's a good move. Uh, I'm lined up with the f7 pawn and the rook. I'm threatening to fork the rook and the king. Ooh, and he played right into it. Okay, that was a really bad move, because now I'm all set up to fork the king and the rook on the f7. Okay. He tries to defend with the queen. If you defend with the queen, it means you're going to lose the queen. Okay, I mean, you're kind of in a bad situation no matter what right there. Might have been better to move the uh, d6 pawn forward. Okay, so we fork the king and the rook. We're going to win a rook. Or and a queen. <laughs> um, okay, so let's take the queen. Okay, so now if he takes the knight with the king, um, I'll probably be able to chase the king out into the open. So he didn't take the didn't take the knight. Uh, I think that might be good a good idea, but that does let my knight escape. And it has an illegal move. E7 to E5. So it wants to take my knight with its bishop in a straight line. That would be nice. And I can't do that. So I'll try again. Okay, so bishop to F6 attacks the knight. Cool. I'll defend it with another bishop. Okay, I'm not sure why it gave up so easy. Um, doesn't seem too good. So let's see here. Let's bring my knight out. Okay, it attacks the knight with a pawn. 
I see a nice attack with the queen right now, taking the queen over to h5. Um, but I'm going to get the knight out of the way first. No reason just to give the knight away. And, um, bring the bishop out. Okay, let's do it. Okay. So now, we got an attack on the h7 pawn. We can also attack the rook from the d5 square. Those are threatening a back rank mate if he doesn't play it right. He moves the king over. So I'm going to go with the pawn. He threatens the knight. Fine, I'll just take the rook. He blocked with the bishop. Okay. Yeah, that's an okay, okay move. I think I'll take this pawn. And, um... And it has an illegal move. E7 to G7. It thinks it can move its bishop horizontally to take the queen. That's wishful thinking, but it needs to try again. Okay. I don't know if he thinks he's attacking my queen or what, but that just lets me take his bishop for free and put him in check. Let's see, if he goes to c8, I could go 6, I could bring the bishop over to f6, I think I got a mate in there pretty quick, um, so he better go to d7, and he did go to d7, okay, um, I'm going to get that, try to get his pawn out of the way, because I think I can get to his king easier if I do, okay, he takes it, so it's Expected. So now, take him with check, and he only has one legal move, right? King c8. Okay, it feels like it's getting real close to check. Um, I'm try to get that bishop. Okay, you know he should have probably opened up an escape. But now, last move is checkmate. So, that was GPT-4. It made one illegal move during that, and it got through 23 moves. Um, there were a few blunders in there. They weren't quite blundering the queen out of nowhere. Um, they were a little more subtle blunders. But, um, it was, that was, you know, that was playing chess somewhat, <laughs> um, but certainly not yellow 1800, I don't know, that seemed like sort of a 600s again, maybe. Okay, so those are the uh, three GPT models playing chess. What do you think? Finally, the interesting thing I want to show you is how to look inside the model and see how the prompt is being generated. So, let's set up a position just to kind of demonstrate this. So we'll, we'll just create some kind of position here. Okay. And now, when you play this, you're in browse mode, but you go into edit mode, and then you can go into the implementation. And in the implementation here, you'll see that from the current move, you can see what the full prompt that would be sent to GPT is if it were about to do this move. So, it says, write an internal monologue of the thought process of deciding the best move to make. Follow this process. Okay, and it says, write the move in this format. And don't vary from that notation. Okay. And then, it puts information about the current board position. The FEN is a way of describing the board. It's a standard standard representation. Uh, it shows the board square by square. Uh, it shows which pieces are defended by other pieces. It shows uh, your pieces that are attacked by the opponent. It's an empty list. Opponent's pieces that are attacked by you. Uh, these pieces of yours are hanging. These opponent pieces are hanging. Here's the white piece counts. 
the black piece counts, and here's the available moves. And then it says internal monologue equal to get it to set out its internal monologue. Okay? And now, um, and then you can see the response you get from GPT right here. So we'll have to wait for GPT-4 to respond. Okay, and here's the actual response that you see. And so it, it actually spits out an internal monologue. As I observe the board, I realize I'm in the Sicilian defense. The opening typically addresses control of the center by trading out black's d-pawn and attempts to undermine white's center from the perimeter. Due to white's double knight development, I should consider countering into a balanced position. Assessing the board configuration, I could use the following heuristics. Central control is important. Minimize piece exposure. Consider development of pieces. Knights before bishops. Aim to secure squares for my pieces. Keep king's safety in mind and consider castling at a convenient opportunity. Promising candidate moves emerge from this analysis. Knight b8 to c6 or a6. Bishop from f8 or to e7 or even d6. Blah, blah, blah. Thinking through the repercussions of these moves, I find that knight to c6 develops a knight and adds another guard to the pawn at e5, but doesn't necessarily threaten anything, okay, and so on. Then postulating possible threats after those moves, if I move knight to c6 or a6, I don't foresee any immediate threats. Bishop moves to e7 or e6 involve a similar situation. Pawn moves would expose threats onto the pawn itself by whites, knights, or pawns. Analyzing from all perspectives, carrying out the plan, of preparing to castle, developing the bishop, and connecting the roots appears to be most beneficial right now. So it decides it's going to do an f8 to e7. Okay, so f8 to e7. So, yeah. Okay, so that's kind of the idea of how this works. And notice that we give the language model as much as we can to work with. And you could actually try modifying the model, you know, possibly giving it more information and see if you could improve its ability, uh, you know, at playing chess. So it could be kind of fun to play with. Okay. And that concludes this video. Thanks for watching.